Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Why Amazon Chose Guide CX. I'd love to know where everyone is tuning in from, so please drop us a comment in the chat and also remember all of your questions in the chat as well because we're going to be answering them throughout the session and in the live Q&A portion at the end. Um, I'd now like to introduce your incredible speakers for today's session. Taking the stage, we have Harris Clark, who is the Chief Operating Officer at GuideCX, which is the leader in customer onboarding software. Harris brings a unique skill set from his decade plus experience in big data, customer experience and diplomatic relations to unlock insights and provide products aimed at elevating the B2B customer experience. In 2022, Harris was awarded the Silicon Slopes Hall of Fame Award for COO of the Year. We also have Heather Schimperling, is a senior EHS program manager at Amazon. Heather has a safety professional for nearly 20 years. She started at Amazon seven years ago and as a safety leader over a team consisting of both safety and medical professionals. After four years, she moved into a multi-site manager role, then promoted to a regional manager role, and is now currently a senior program manager in operational risk, which supports the reduction of risk across the North American Fulfillment Center organization, providing insights and expertise to the network and assurance of compliance. Heather is the Amazon point of contact for GuideCX platform. Um, and we also have Erica Adams, who was recently promoted to senior EHS program manager at Amazon. Erica began her Amazon career eight years ago in the fulfillment center warehouse business, leading a team of safety and medical professionals, and then transitioned into a program manager that provides development of leadership content to support the development and growth of newly hired and promoted safety professionals across North America. So with all that said, I'd now like to hand it over to Harris, Heather and Erica. Thank you so much, Beth. We really appreciate the introduction. Um, Erica, congratulations on the promotion. You, you got a lot of uh, fans in the chat here. And thank you all. Heather, uh, I'm sure <laughs> people aren't asking it, but I'm sure everyone wants to know what kind of dog you have. I have a feeling. Sorry about Don't that. Be sorry. <laughs> I actually have two. <laughs> I actually have uh, two mini Alcy doodles named Frodo and Sam because I'm I am a Lord of the Rings fanatic. Yes, this is true. <laughs> wow, I I just learned something new about you. Um, yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> Well, good. And the, uh, I can't wait for the Lord of the Rings references to stream in through the chat. Uh, we have people from all over. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This is an exciting day we've been preparing for for a while here. Um, we are going to get into our customer spotlight here and uh, learn from uh, this amazing team at Amazon. But yeah, again, thank you for joining. I, I see people from Washington, D.C., my hometown. Uh, I see people from both ends of, uh, of Canada, uh, from Vancouver to Halifax, from all over the, the states uh, and beyond. Oh, we got uh, Ontario as well. Anyway, yeah, thank you. It means a lot uh, that everyone has joined. and I, I see more people constantly streaming in. So as you're joining, share where you're from uh, and any questions you've got, uh, we will we'll be sure to address uh, as we dive in. Uh, but first, you, you got some great introductions from Beth there. Um, but yeah, um, Heather uh, has been a safety professional for 20 years, married for 32 years, three kids and three grandchildren. Congratulations. Um, do any of the kids or grandkids have Lord of the Rings names or nicknames from Grandma Heather? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes uh yes yes uh, my oldest granddaughter's name is arwen is what yes and uh arwen okay. which is one of the the um fairy princess characters i w we work a little bit on the nerdy side <laughs> in 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 my family and i also wanted to say my last name is pronounced schimmelfennig um, just in case anybody was wondering. 
I don't know. I'm not sure what she said, but that was a really nice try. <laughs> well, thank you, Mrs. Yeah. Schimmel Fennig. And if anyone can, if anyone can, can uh, guess my maiden name, you get an extra 50 points. <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Well, again, thanks, Heather. Thanks so much. Um, and Erica, related to Lucille Ball, uh, what what is the relation? Well, it's not that close, but according to AI, we do share 0.05% <laughs> DNA. She is fifth cousin. Excellent. Good, good, good. <laughs> um, and then this last one here, I, I know everyone will uh, insist <coughs> that I ask you to I will do so the four honor. seconds I will on the, the clock, honor. alphabet backwards. Yes. All right. It may sound a little different being through the computer, but I swear in person, you will articulate, you can articulate all the letters. So here I go. Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, G, H, F, E, D, C, B, A. <coughs> Very impressive. Very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm great she at a DUI. Is, <laughs> she is amazing. She is, uh, she, she is amazing. So, I mean, if you could ever see Erica in person, you definitely see the Lucille Ball personality that comes out of her. She just always <coughs> keeps everybody happy, fun, engaged. She's quite, quite a human being. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for being here with us. Um, let's dive in. We are, have a few goals for today. We want everyone to know um, how Amazon kind of started this journey and decided that they needed to look for something to help with this particular problem that we'll discuss. What data matters to Amazon and how you can apply those things at your company. Obviously, everyone who's joining here um, probably does not work for Amazon. And I'm sure that just like me, you're fascinated by the inner workings of such a big company, but also such a personal company. Um, I'd be surprised if there's anyone here who doesn't engage with Amazon in some way, uh, you know, weekly or monthly, right? We, we order things from Amazon, we stream content from Amazon. Uh, the internet service that we are on right now is probably propped up by Amazon Web Services. Uh, so we all uh, are very familiar with this company Yet the size and scale is so large. I'm sure, again, just like me, a lot of you joined to learn, hey, what? how does Amazon think? And is there anything that Amazon is doing or thinking that I can apply at my company or with my teams? Um, and so we'll start off uh, by talking through a little bit of the exact structure of um, the teams that Heather and Erica work with. Uh, so let me turn a little bit of time over. Um, talk to us about uh, safety at Amazon, um, how how your teams work, uh, and how that eventually touches end customers like myself. So I would say <clears throat> Amazon, the organization that we are associated with is the EHS organization. So environmental health and safety. Um, as mentioned before, both Erica and I came to Amazon as site safety professionals. And at the site level, that team will engage with associates and local site leadership to help ensure the safety of all the associates in the warehouse. In fact, Amazon really values the safety culture and safety mindset at the buildings. And what is one of the most amazing things and what attracted me about even wanting to work as a safety professional with Amazon was the fact that it invests so much talent into safety management from the site level all the way up through the regional and multi-site level up into the senior leadership level our organization is and I, I think the number of safety professionals just in the business unit that we're associated with is around the 3300 number so of all the safety professionals that are supporting the site level safety we have over 30 we have 3300 safety professionals to me that's mind-boggling um the teams there will not only engage with associates and drive safety but they will also partner with the leadership teams at the sites to help them manage their safety program and ensure the site safety of all associates they will help implement change they will help 
to do inspections and auditing and investigations. And part of what Eric and I do at the level we work with, and we're not the only ones, there's an army of us out there that helps to support that safety drive. Um, we work on preparing safety professionals to be the best they can be confident in their job. We also work to provide tools and mechanisms to help them have a better experience as they're performing their jobs and executing their standard work. So safety is one of the most important things at Amazon and Amazon shows that by investing in the talent that we have, in the programs that we have, um, the initiatives and even, even um, core teams that we put together, say for a specific area of safety, we will do whatever it takes to make sure that we are the most compliant and the most accurate in our procedure. Wow, thank you. Um, so Erica, I, anything else that, that you would add there? And uh, yeah, it definitely got me got me thinking about all, so all of these safety professionals that you're working with are taking care of the associates in the fulfillment centers um, that essentially yeah. make sure that we all get what we order, uh, you know, safely and, and efficiently. Exactly. Like Heather said, um, what drove me to work at Amazon was the fact that we're such a technology driven company and um we you know we innovate and use the best that's out there so how can we integrate the newest technology um, to make a safer workplace and just like you said harris um when you think about the amazonian customer um, at the site level the customers truly are the people ordering the packages so all the operations managers the associates packing the boxes their primary focus is the true customer outside of Amazon, making sure that they can get the box out the door and in a timely manner to our customer, which is y'all. Um, but for us, for Heather and I and our positions at Amazon, our customer is the site safety managers at the site. They're the ones that we're trying to serve and make a better experience as a safety professional. Excellent and perfect segue. Your customer is that safety manager. Okay. so. We and now trying to you know keep my word on relating this to us and everyone who joined. Um, as we're using Guide CX, we're using it to help onboard new customers. Right, we get a new customer. We want to help make sure that they're comfortable and familiar with how to use our software or our service. And I'm not talking Guide CXs, but I'm talking you know speaking for all of our customers who join this call. Um, and so, in your world, your customer. It are the these safety uh, managers uh, at, at the sites at each one of the fulfillment centers. Um, fantastic. Okay, so tell us a little bit about kind of pain points before Guide CX. What led you to search for something like Guide CX? Um, if I, you know, making an educated guess, I would assume Amazon tried to build their own solutions before finding Guide CX. Uh, at being such a technology forward company, yeah, I guess paint a little picture for for all of us on. What made you think, Erica, like you said, hey, we, we need to go find something um, to help do better for our new customers, our, our safety managers who are, who are on site? Yeah, go ahead, Heather. Well, um, I will just say briefly, and then I'll let Erica talk a little bit about what it was like when we found GuideCX to you. So when our team was first formulated, and something to keep in mind is the team that Erica and I are on actually didn't start until um, about the first quarter of 2022, okay. right? 20, 2022. So we are a very young team and we started with just a handful of folks and now we are actually, uh, um, the team has grown and we've taken on more responsibility. We've expanded into different pillars now, but the team that we had in the very beginning was really just one specific pillar that was focused on supporting the reduction of attrition of some of the safety professionals that we were we were having. So we were looking for a way to help instill that confidence in the onboarding experience for our new safety managers coming into the company. Um, we were looking at the internal tools that we already had available to us and we found them lacking, just to be frank. Um, we didn't have a lot of visibility into 
the customer experience of that onboarded associate. We didn't have a lot of visibility into um, the milestones and dependencies that they were hitting. Um, in fact, we were finding that is that the onboarded associate could do as much or as little of the work required of them at their own leisure. There was no real structure to that onboarding process except for a guide given out. Um, we weren't privy to a lot of the information that um, helps us understand what are the trends and, and things that need to be fixed in that onboarded associates experience. So we were just looking around for ways to improve. And one of the things that we found early on was this tool, GuideCX. And it, what we were looking for at the time to um, what we knew we needed to fix. The tool checked every box that we were looking for to move forward with something different, to try something new and something different. From the reporting that's available to setting up specific tasks with all the information needed in there, making sure that there's communication between the, the onboarding person and the, the guide or person that was helping them or responsible for their experience, right? So, um, and that's sort of what led us to to that is we just had, we did, we had a lack of data of really seeing where we knew there was a problem, but we didn't have a lot of information to help us pinpoint the specific things that we needed to work on. We weren't able to really get a lot of information from those folks because some of them would have one specific path and some would have another specific path. Um, just the overall basic lack of visibility in the overall process kind of kept us from able from being able to really implement a change. So mm -hmm. I'll let Erica talk a little bit about um, some of the comparison stuff that she did in the beginning of looking into what was not good versus what we could get out of a new tool. Yeah. yeah so I was just going to say but before you jump in, Erica, that uh, Heather, I, I love the and again, trying to relate. So what led to the search was you are seeing attrition with your safety managers who are your customers as erica helped mm -hmm. us understand earlier um so i mean exactly the same thing i think a lot of us are dealing with uh that leads to a search for something like guide cx hey our the way we take care of our new customers is not the way we want to or we're seeing we need to improve that experience there the end result often is attrition or churn. You might call it customer churn, right? Um, or in your case, kind of employee attrition with those, uh, you know, your internal customers uh, leaving because they don't feel prepared, onboarded, up-leveled, uh, you know, comfortable with, with the, the program. So um, yeah, anyway, excellent kind of corollary to, to what all of us are doing. Yeah. and. You know, the fact that Amazon is so obsessed with technology and using our data to have continuous improvement across all business units from technology to how can we make the package come to you faster um, and to the point of where, OK, we look at the feedback has been consistent that the onboarding is not a great experience. So then we say first, okay, well, let's look at our data. Yeah. Let's look at the past three years data. What are they saying? Um, you know, let's get more granular. What can we change and move forward today? And we had no data. We have no data to even show where are we lacking. We have no information to see what is working, what isn't working. So here we are in a tool or whatever Amazon has built previously to this point um you know i hate to say it but as semi all have been wasted because we cannot have a reflection back on what we can do better if that it does sense. it makes a ton of sense and i think it's why a lot of us are here right and and honestly I, you know just going back a little bit it's why we started this company because when you look at how well you take care of your customer and you know we're not just guide we're guide cx we're trying to think about the whole customer experience and when you think about that, so much of it starts with kind of cliches that we're all comfortable with, right? Like the first, the importance of first impression and you, you only get that chance once. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, so yeah. they, these moments, they, they linger in our minds and confirmation bias, there, there's all kinds of psychology and neuroscience behind it. Um, and so when people start to connect those dots, 
I think a lot of people do exactly what you described, Erica, where it's, okay, let's look at the data. Let's try to figure out, we're getting this feedback or we have this hypothesis, now let's look at what we're doing. And I'm shocked, you know, we, we've been at this for five years now and we've worked with, you know, companies like Amazon all the, all the way to smaller companies, uh, how often people say, we don't have the data. You know, we, we don't know how long on average it takes us to onboard or what the different factors are, if it's a different product or a different position or a different team, um, or what are the biggest sticking points that make us go slower or make us go faster? Um, you know, how do we set those expectations? And it's funny, I mean, the, the, the partnership here really is, uh, it was a match made in heaven because we have used, even long before uh, Amazon was a customer of ours, we use that package tracking analogy constantly, you know, and we, we tout how, because uh, again, I think it's something we can all relate to, you know, I know every step of the way where my package is. I know it proactively. Uh, so even if it's late, I was told that I've got, you know, understanding of where it is. And when it gets to me, I mean, nowadays they're taking a photo of it on my doorstep to leave no doubt that it's there and that it was successfully delivered. Um, but so much of that is having the data to make those changes and to make sure that people do um, have the tools they need um, to, to make a difference. And I, I like what you said there. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. I like what you said, because as you were saying, the analogy of I know step by step what is going on with my package um, as you're the customer, we want to know the same thing for our customer, the uh, new employees coming in. Where are they at in their onboarding? Do they have the step by step um, guides information that is setting them up for success? And do we have that visibility to see are they getting it done? Um, and I want to see the yeah. picture at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I will say, I will say as well, like having Guide CX and the work that we've done there, and even where in the areas that we've been able to use Guide CX thus far, intentionally setting aside that plan for a specific purpose to get from, you know, it's it helps you to visualize better where you're at right now and where you want to be at the end of this this term, yeah. whether it's that six week onboarding process or it's an eight week process you can map out basically what the experience needs to be with somebody with a healthy amount of clarity not only for yourself yeah. to see so you can see where someone needs to be along the way but also for that person that's actually in the experience yeah. going through it yes um that it's it's almost like it's a comfort to have that there whereas you know prior to some of the work that this this team has done in improving the overall onboarding and preparation for these safety professionals, where before some of us uh, that have been at Amazon a while, like Eric and I, we remember the days when we came in as a new mm -hmm. safety person. There wasn't a whole lot of of training. There was just like, okay, you're welcome to the team, get to work, yep. and you know, and it, that just isn't a good experience for anybody, no matter what position they're in, starting in something new. Yeah, so totally. Um, um, and I, you know, it's funny, it reminds me of kind of the, are we there yet question? I have four little boys and you're talking about how like, Hey, the importance of knowing where you are in the journey, uh, you know, my, my kids will ask, uh, you know, how close are we? Are, are we there yet? Are we almost there? And I have to check myself because unfortunately, and I'm not proud to admit this, but sometimes I think to myself, like, what does it matter? We're, we're going, we're in a car. You can see that we're driving. We're trying to get there as, as quick as we can. But the reality is just like you said, Heather, it actually does matter. It, it matters to us, the customer, whether it's my kid in the back seat or whether it's you know the health, health and safety leader or whether it's a brand new customer who just signed up for our software or service, it matters that they know how close they are and what else has to be done. Um, and it matters if they know is the ball in your court or is the ball in my court? Is there something that I need to do um, and it's interesting. I mean, the correlation between onboarding a new customer and onboarding a new member of the team like you all are doing, I think is so strong where there are things where you need to know, hey, have you done this yet? Have you gotten through this? Um, and if you don't have the data to show that or if you don't provide the engaging experience to make sure that your end customer is comfortable and clear on where they are, um, then attrition uh, spikes, right? Churn spikes, th things get really tough. Um, 
Okay. Right. Let's, um, I think that you've done a great job of kind of setting the stage for what led to this. Um, finding Guide CX, and I'll, I'll share just a, a funny story real quick. You know, as, as we all started to talk, um, we think of this onboarding as, you know, new customer onboarding. Uh, and so we were talking with Heather and Erica, and it was, hey, well, you're going to be onboarding new employees, new team members, um, you know, any concerns there? Um, and Heather and Erica kind of looked at me funny, like, no, they, those are our customers. It is, it's the same thing. It's not, uh, you know, like th they did a good job correcting me that no, like that, if I'm working with an internal team that is my customer, I need to provide them this same level of experience um, that people are providing to their brand new customers who are external teams. So um, yeah, always good to be learning. And I, I appreciated that, that correction there. But yeah, so walk us through a little bit, Heather, Erica, whoever wants to start. Um, you know, finding Guide CX, starting to implement, what were some of the goal? Obviously, we had a big goal of understanding our data better. You went through this process, you knew you had a challenge, you're looking for data, you didn't have any, um, you know, enter Guide CX, how, how to, and, and one of the questions that came through the chats was, hey, you know, what, what kind of data did help um, come through once, once you started using Guide? So I think from a high level perspective to answer that question, um, we have we have been able to actually use Guide CX and sort of stress test it through one really important program that um, uh, um, one of the members of our OpEx team led. Her name is Kim Kim Morgan, and she did a fantastic job of Shout out to Kim of using Guide integrating Guide Yep <laughs> integrating Guide CX um, with the intern program. So and with the intern program. Um, there was definitely an element of associate onboarding for, um, from that particular intern coming into the company, which lasted a couple of weeks of their 10 week assignment with us over the summer. And then the rest of that was dedicated to them meeting the goals of their specific project. So the way that we do WHS intern, just like any Amazon thing, it's always a big deal, <laughs> right? We bring in a ton of interns um, and we had a ton of interns. I want to say the number landed at about, I think it was 108 interns that we had something or something like that over the summer. Um, and each one of them would was at a site, right? And they would be given a project to manage, but then they would have to be onboarded in the beginning. So some of the data yeah. points that we were able to get from then was, you know, how on time are they with their tasks? So, and if you're familiar with the format or the um, the base of Guide CX, you'll have milestones and within each milestone, specific tasks that can have dependencies or not. So we would measure um, through specific reporting that Kim and her team were able to coordinate with your team. Um, they had custom reports made that showed them, you know, what's the on time completion of tasks. Where are these interns in their overall program? Um, are they getting the support that they need from their managers and other stakeholders that are attached to that specific project? So, whereas a lot of that data in prior years of WHS intern management was very manual and based on interaction and self-reporting up mm -hmm. um, where, where these interns would be, much of that was an automated type of, of auto-populated data just when the intern would click, I'm done with this, yeah. you know, or I'm stuck on yeah. this. Um, that would give Kim and her team a lot of insight into understanding which managers maybe do they need to kind of support and help or which interns do they need to help or is there any other stakeholder that could come in and support them to help them be successful and and i yeah. think that's what the beautiful thing yeah. about it is is it's helping us do what what we're supposed to be doing which is make people be successful in their job so for me that would be the best kind of data points brought to life um 
And I don't know necessarily if those data points are new to anybody, but they're brought more quickly and in a more in a more uh, clear way, so that we can you know add some sort of mitigation or support or recognition, depending on what that data reflects. Yeah. I, well, and just so uh, so interesting to hear uh, the impact that's had because I I think we take for granted that what happens in onboarding. Those are leading indicators for lagging results, which are going to be attrition, retention, you know, loyalty, growth, uh, additional opportunities. But the leading indicator um, or the leading indicators can be exactly what you just laid out there, Heather. I mean, understanding how long each task is taking, how many people are stuck, where is this cohort? who needs the most help, being able to flag those things early and then support uh, can make all the difference in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I do have something to add. Um, pretty cool with GuideCX, the program in this, uh, what do you call it, Heather? I'm not going to call it a pilot, the stress test, the yeah. stress test of using it with our interns. Um, yes, at that point, our customer is the intern, so an external yeah. coming on to Amazon. But at the same time, how can we support the site safety manager who is managing the intern? And within Guide CX, we're able to add different tasks that can be only visible for that hiring manager and can help support these hiring managers because they still have day to day jobs to do at the site and ensure all the associates and everyone at the site is safe, but now they have an extra workload of having a, an intern on the site. So how can we, our customer, again, our original customer being the site safety manager, how can we support them in the onboarding of a WHS intern? And with that, we can see, okay, um, you know, maybe it's not the program that we have right now in place on milestone three, or yeah. whatever that's not working maybe it's the the task that we have assigned to the manager that aren't best supporting the intern that's great well, I, that's good um <laughs> so i think w one thing that stands out to me there that i hear is uh, the importance of communication kind of using those data points not just as data points but then to communicate and jump in when the time's right uh to yeah. give another amazon analogy i um I ordered and to stay with the theme of those four boys of mine. They uh, these these are little boys, and so they needed biker gloves, as you know, as one would. And they had to have cut off fingers. And two of my boys wanted the blue ones, and two wanted the red ones. And the blue ones came right away, and the red ones weren't coming. Um, but I was amazed at how Amazon kept me updated. That hey, you know, still going to take a little longer. And then there was a certain point where I got a proactive email saying it's been a long time, do you wanna just cancel this order and get a refund? And then, you know, you can place the order again. And it's interesting because I think on the surface, you might think, well, whoa, why would they be asking to, you know, give money back? Um, isn't that bad for business? But the reality was the experience for me built so much trust that I was being taken care of and that my best interests were being looked out for um, that I it, it, it has only made me more uh, of a fan of using the service, not less so. And so to, I guess, try to draw an analogy there, are you seeing that and do any stories stand out with your teams where it's, hey, maybe there's some bad news to deliver, maybe somebody's marked a task stuck, or you're seeing that, you know, a team member's onboarding is just not going the way that it should, but it gets flagged um, and that the, having that visibility and being able to jump in, use the data to make a connection um, and communicate has has actually proven helpful and not detrimental. Yes, and I would say um, during this last summer when we were able when we were in the stress test, there was information and data that was provided, um, maybe not in total just from Guide CX, but definitely from a performance perspective that would trigger Kim and the team to be alerted to, hey, we need to look into this. You know, and then finding out that, you know, maybe possibly there's a personal factor once they get, you know, diving into that. Um, the, the big thing that I feel Guide CX helps supported the best 
is that, and being a, a past site safety manager myself, who has had a few different interns come my way uh, over the years, right? Um, it's very easy to be be kind of out on an island managing that intern, mm -hmm. being the one source uh, a resource for them for every single question that they have. What we were able to do with Guide CX is all of this group was onboarded together. So they, mm -hmm. they took the Guide CX training together. Um, they had a network with Kim and her team, um, a resource and asking questions. So, and, and additionally, not just that, mm -hmm. but as a user of Guide CX, if you're in there looking at your own project, you have Guide CX to ask if you're having a technical issue right. in the chat function. Right. So it's, there's, there's just a built in resource mechanism, uh, direct lifelines to the folks that are stakeholders in your project directly managing you, but also to the technological side of the tool itself, um, to where if someone ha is having an issue, they don't have to wait for me to get back to them. They can go and find that resource quickly. And I think it's also really cool to point out, and I feel very good data that came from a survey that we did of all of the users, um, both the intern and the manager users of Guide CX over the 10 weeks that we had, or 10 to 12 weeks that we had the intern program going, um, both in the category of the Guide CX training comprehension, those those that took the survey, we found they were 91% favorable that they felt the training was comprehensive and prepared them, and also 91% favorable that they felt Guide CX was user friendly. I feel like for a stress test and for us doing something for the first time, that's actually really great, um, really great feedback to help build upon, right? Um, good to start, but but room to grow and even get better and more improved in it. Absolutely. 91 is the yes. perfect sweet spot for a type A personality. It's like, okay, it's good. <laughs> But still an A. We can still it's still an A. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there, but there's still uh, there's still plenty to work on. So that that's great. Thank you, Erica. Right. Sorry I interrupted yep. you there. No, you're fine. I was just going to say, um, I mean, I'm sure outside of Amazon, many other companies are hurting to fill roles in various uh, departments that they work with. So when they do onboard someone, that speed is critical in order to get them settled into their own yes. role. Um, so doing the stress test on the intern was that times 100 because like Heather said, we only have them for 10 weeks. So in order to get that communication from the intern, uh, let's say they have a required training they have to take in their first uh, week or first two yep. weeks. Um, if something is going wrong in that training, the link doesn't work, um, it, it goes to a dead link, they are having IT issues with VPN, whatever it is, if we don't get that feedback and can essentially stop the yes. bleed, then all 107 other interns are going to be affected and it's going to delay their uh, entire 10 week project. So. Uh, the communication is critical that we understand where they're having those pain points so that if there's anything we need to fix immediately, we can get done. Um, so that data is is crucial. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I, I, I it just, yeah, it makes me think of that power of that stuck task notification, like how, how quickly uh, we talked a lot over here about shortening the distance between insight and action. So how quickly can the insight be yeah. surfaced? And then is it surfaced in such a way that someone can easily take action on it and get to, you know, the, yeah. the root of the problem? Because, you know, we uh, we all love technology and the efficiency, the efficiencies it helps drive. But at the end of the day, uh, often you need a person to take that efficiency and operationalize and make something yeah. happen or make somebody feel like they've been seen or they've been heard. And if somebody can quickly mark, hey, I'm stuck here enter a note, say what they're stuck on, what they need help with. Now that human element comes in and, you know, uh, someone can say, hey, I see you. I've got you. I, I know where you are. I, I can help. Here, here's what we're going to do. Um, I think that changes the whole experience of, of being onboarded. 
Absolutely. No other way to feel supported as as if you are listened to when you say, hey, I have a problem and someone can say, hey, I'm here yeah. to fix it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I would say, too, I would say um, I don't want to I don't want to gloss over the fact that when we first we first became onboarded right into using guide CX as administrators, the experience that we had just just being your customer coming in um, the different levels of training that we took from the guide CX university to the one on one, you know, just teaching us how to do templates and how to navigate through the system. It really was stellar. Like, I don't think I've, I've, you know, I've been a safety professional nearly 20 years. I don't believe I've ever had that, um, that much attention to my success been put in by, by a company I've been working and having to learn a new system. So I would say it isn't just the program that helps a customer or your customer to, to give a good customer experience to someone that yeah. they're working with, but you you do that when you onboard your customers as well. And we still have that support. Um, I still feel like if I have a question, I can go to my dedicated customer service person and they're gonna take the time, meet with me, help me answer my questions, um, look at my list of demands and really consider them, <laughs> you know? Um, so I just, it's just been a really great experience all around. That's incredible. That that means the world. I, I will pass that along to the team who's working so hard for you. And I, I saw somebody else share that they're having the same experience. Um, I, that was not part of uh, the rehearsal for this. <laughs> yeah, that, that really means the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely wasn't wasn't a re rehearsed thing, yeah. but it is the truth. Uh, We've experienced no of great customer service from the company. Thank you. So. Um, all right, so I think, yeah, uh, wrapping up and putting a bow, and I, I know we've only got a couple minutes left, so if any, if any other lingering questions remain, please uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. And um, I, I know Heather, Eric, and I have a few more minutes, so uh, we'll, we'll stay on as long as everyone else does if, if you've got more questions to ask. But, uh, you know, it's interesting hearing you talk through, um, you understood the experience yourself um, as well as you could first. And I think it's important to note and to um, not shy away from the fact that you also were able to recognize the things that you didn't understand. Um, you talked about the data that you didn't have access to and going through the experience yourself, getting good feedback can give you that clear vision so that you understand, hey, our understanding is this narrow and we, we really need to open it up. Um, and then finding ways to automate communication. Amazon is, you know, expert at this and being able to apply that into, um, you know, the way that you help your safety managers is, is super impressive. Leading into that third point of making sure that you're forecasting risks, making sure that people understand, hey, the package is going to be late or, hey, you're training, you're, we've got 10 weeks to get you ramped. Uh, we're not on track. Here's what we need to do. Let's double down, spend a little extra time, communicate. Um, and to be able to wrap all that into constantly, I mean, Eric, I think I forget if it was you or Heather who said it earlier, but kind of an operating principle at Amazon to be constantly improving and iterating. Um, and so that requires that machine that can measure your efficiency. If you don't have something in place that is templatized, that gives you reporting, um, that is standardized, that you can customize to say, hey, these are exactly the things we need to know then it's really tough to get better year after year. You talked about this stress test, which I know from talking to you offline, right? That helps us gear up for the next big event. And then the next one after that. Um, and Amazon's obviously a company that scales, right? So we will be scaling together and helping figure out, okay, hey, we solved that. Now we need to solve this. Now we need to solve this. Um, and I think, you know, having um, the, the steps you've walked us through can help any company at any size. Uh, you know, you don't have to be the size of Amazon. Um, to make those kinds of impacts, yeah. um, really powerful. Any uh, any any last any last thoughts before we turn over to any any questions? All right. Well, thank you both so much. Um, let's see. Any questions that um, have come in? Uh, yeah, thank you all very much and 
yeah thank, thank you, you for clarifying how to say your last name <laughs> <laughs> you definitely it, 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 one of those names or better than thinking about <laughs> the whole time um but yeah i do actually have a couple of questions and um, okay. so what specific data points related to the onboarding process has guide cx brought light to i think we answered that one earlier um i think we when we were talking about the um we were talking about the stress test with the intern or intern program we have, we were able to see um, the on-time completion of tasks, um, whereas the intern program before was really more manually um, reported out on from the sites and from the interns themselves, whereas we were able to see that real-time task completion by the, the various stakeholders that might be associated with one project. So those were the kind of data points we were able to get and, you know, much more clearly. Um, and also not just that tasks were getting done, but maybe who wasn't doing tasks. So I know there was a lot of um, where Kim and her team would provide updates to senior leadership about, you know, specific, maybe specific managers who hadn't done tasks or specific interns that were lagging and getting things done. So it gave a lot of insight into where they needed to focus support, you know, more strongly to drive completion and help those interns um, to finish up their projects. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we talked a lot about time to value. Um, and I think that that's applicable here, right? The value being how quickly could they get onboarded? So time to value, time on task, with that exception handling. Yes. I guess what Agreed. have you learned about your onboard, onboarding process while using Guide 6? I think we've learned that you can make up excuses as to why something's not working, but truly no person has the same experience. So therefore mm -hmm. it needs to be customizable. So with Guide CX, we can say, okay, maybe this intern, um, a lot of them have to move across country. So uh, we can layer in that in the first couple milestones uh, of keeping that in mind that these these tasks are going to take longer because they're moving. Um, same thing with some of them are going to move faster because they have maybe gone back to school and they have experience in the industry already. And this is a required internship or someone that's uh, fresh out of college. So I think we've learned that uh, with the platform, we can really customize the onboarding experience for what the user needs. Thank you, Erica. Um, we've had a couple of questions come in then. So do you anticipate growth in your 2024 intern program versus 2023? Yes, I believe I saw some data um, in our strategy planning. The estimations is that the intern program could could grow to over 300 participants potentially in 2024, which Tripling. would really be great. Whoa. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Um, and do any other divisions slash groups at Amazon use GuardCX for any different uses? At this time, I don't believe so, but I do know there are, there are other teams that have shown a lot of interest in GuardCX. Um, and for their own individual projects. But at this time, I'm not aware. Um, but I do think that I do think that other Amazon teams, again, Amazon is very big, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're just one really, really, even though our business unit mm -hmm. is very, very big, we're just one small piece of Amazon. It, um, it overwhelms me to think about how big this company is at it times, is, to be honest. It's amazing. Um, but there, there are other companies yeah, and I know Harris that other other teams have approached yeah. Guide CX asking questions and 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 seeking information. So, yeah, yeah, we uh, we won't count our our chickens before they hatch. But they're uh, it is amazing to hear you <laughs> say that a three thousand person depart or you know business unit is so small in the grand scheme of of the whole company. Yeah, well, we're talking about three thousand just of that position. 
Oh, that's right. There's other people. There's operations. There's yeah. HR. There's the associates themselves that are actually doing the physical work in the the fulfillment centers. It's 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 mind boggling to be honest. It's it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. There are a couple others that came in. Um, we're having issues with external customers not wanting to engage um, even via email. We find we need to chase them even with the automated emails. Any thoughts on how to improve the external customer engagement? So have you had any people go through the program where uh, they're not, you know, you have this cohort of 100 interns. Um, maybe most of them are engaging just fine. Sorry, Heather, I, I, I saw We it. have not. Um, we have not had to deal with any external customers, right? So, and we have, don't have an intention to use this on, from anyone that doesn't have an Amazon email alias. So we yeah. haven't had to deal with that issue specifically, Julie. Um, but what I would say just as, you know, from a brainstorming perspective, um, I don't know what you've done from an engagement part and meeting with them or maybe having some sort of a kickoff or meeting with them to kind of explain that and show them the simplicity of it. I have probably yeah. shown, I don't know how many people guide CX, like a Heather's mini demo version of guide CX. Um, and every time we do that, the simplicity of use is what I think wins people over into really, really sparking interest. So I, I would suggest maybe trying that. Yeah. Another idea is that you could figure out if there's a, a platform your company uses that GuideCS could integrate with that communicates outside of that email. So they get a, like an app notification, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, signaling things they need to complete. Yeah. That's a good idea. Great idea. Both of those. Um, yeah. And that's something I, I just to give kudos to the Amazon team here. I, I've seen them do a great job of setting the table, which as we talk about customer onboarding so much, um, we know a lot of that starts setting that table in the sales process. And then in the kickoff process, you know, how, how are we talking about the experience and opening it up, uh, making sure that, that there is a level of comfort there. Yeah. Great answers. I think the last question here, let's try to get for, um, what was the biggest mistake or error you would try to avoid if you had to do this again from scratch? So going back in time, you get to start all over. Um, is there anything that you would look back on and say, we would have done this a little differently or that a little differently? I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess just the newness of this being something that I had never tried to work with doing, um, bringing in an external resource to help time manage and onboard and and organize right um i don't necessarily know if there was any other way we could have we could have done something we we followed the steps erica you jump right in right you know whatever you think but yeah. i feel like we followed the steps based on our own internal guidance and yeah. the suggestion and guidance from guide cx and it it helped us to get to a point where we could actually use the tool um i think maybe yeah. If I had a wish list of things I could have changed, I would have made that process go more quickly, right? Um, but yeah. things take time sometimes when you're integrating and getting the approval to use something external in an inter with an internal um, project, right? So yeah. I maybe I maybe would have probably um, done a done a better job personally of getting more intimate with the tool. Right, so I could be better, more articulate to speak about it um, as in the earlier days of truly trying to push it. Yeah, for me, but I think that would be a personal thing, not necessarily an overall management. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you need, if you need to get buy-in from other stakeholders yeah. within your company, you know, you need to be this the subject matter expert on what you're trying to pitch. So I think that's a great call out, Heather. Yeah. I I think something we could have done a better job is that we knew we were going to stress test it with a specific population. Um, and then we kind of had to do this on, on the go, I believe is the 
some of the report custom reports that we were having built with guide cx uh with with us together creating the reports is um coming to those meetings knowing ahead of time exactly what we wanted mm -hmm. out of the data so that we couldn't we didn't have to wait during the stress test we could have had the reports ready to go um, maybe in our you know our internal before we started the the intern program um because i feel like that took a little little time but yeah. again it was all great the support we had with guide cx to get those yeah, i think we would have, i i think that's an excellent call out erica i think that on our side being more um descriptive and defined in what we were after because i think that yeah. we created i think we and i'm not saying it was guy cx i think we created ambiguity right and yeah. really asking too many what ifs what ifs what ifs when really we just we knew we needed we needed to see this this, yeah. is, this is what we want and i think i think that that that's something we could have managed personally better it's interesting. I feel like that ties a perfect bow on the whole conversation because the very first thing we talked about was what data we were lacking and needing. And, you know, again, mm -hmm. I think it's something we can all relate to and putting the time in and investing in, hey, well, exactly what do I want out of this data and what decisions should it help me make? You know, shortening that distance between insight and action. We can get tons of data in front of anybody, but what are the decisions we're going to try to make based on it and doing maybe the, the, the thinking necessary around that um, could could help. Um, but uh, custom reporting has been mentioned a few times for anyone listening who doesn't know. Um, that's a service we offer. Um, so if you have any questions about that or want to build out custom reports in Guide CX, um, reach out to us on you know the website or in the chat or with your CSM, and uh, yeah, we can help you go through that. But just want to make sure that if anyone's like, what what are they talking about those custom reports? But yeah, we, we'd be happy to help anyone build those. Um, well, thank you so much, um, Heather and Erica. Uh, thank you. I give you a round of applause on behalf of everyone who, who joined and, and learned. I, I took uh, more and more notes. Uh, so yeah, thank you for your help and um, you're, you're great to work with. And thanks, Beth, and thanks to Customer Success Collective for putting this on. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thanks, Erica, Heather, Harris. I'll speak to you all soon. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. I don't know how to leave. <laughs>